Choice of entity, shifting of income for tax savings problem one. Mr. and Mrs. Barry are equal partners in a family partnership. Mr. and Mrs. Barry's marginal tax rate is 35%. Next year, the partnership is expected to generate $200,000 of ordinary income. The Barrys are considering transferring 20% interest in the partnership to each of their two children. Their daughter, Straw, has a 12% marginal tax rate. Their son, Rasp, has a 22% marginal tax rate. Calculate the expected annual tax savings to the family from the proposed transfer of partnership interests. This is a great problem because it shows you some of the ways that partnerships are used in terms of tax planning. This is very common. This is a family partnership or family limited partnership planning strategy mechanism that's used by many um many families that own businesses or have lots of wealth because the idea is that children, they might be in a lower bracket compared to the parents. Now, of course, if they're, you're ultra wealthy, the, the children probably are, you know, have trust and they're getting tons of income and that's being earned off that. So it doesn't really work for them, but certain types of, of families and certain types of plans, it can work for those, those business owners and whatnot. So we have Mr. and Mrs. Barry, they are equal partners. So Mr. and Mrs. Barry, those are two partners. So Mr. Barry, and Mrs. Barry, two owners of this partnership, of this partnership. So they basically own 50% each, 50% each. And their their marginal rate is 35%. And it's very likely, we're not told specifically in the problem. I mean, we're told they have one rate, so it's very likely that they file married filing joint, married filing joint in that rate. I'm going to assume that is the case. That's what it looks like here. And what they're trying to do is the partnership is expected to generate $200,000. Now, right now, if you think about it, $200,000 times 35%, it's going to be subject because remember that even if Mr. and Mrs. Barry don't take a distribution of money, right, the, the partnership just continues to um, retain its earnings. We allocate, right? There's one level of tax, partnership tax, there's one level of tax, and it's on the allocated income. So the allocated income in total to Mr. and Mrs. Barry under the current system where they're both equal partners, it's subject to a 35% rate and you're going to have to pay $70,000 in taxes, $70,000 in taxes. So that is the current structure. They're considering though a change that potentially can save them some taxes. So the proposed structure, what they're going to do, and they're probably doing this from a non-tax standpoint as well. They might be getting older or they're retiring and they want to obviously transfer wealth to their um, succession playing, to their, to their children. And they have two children. They have straw and they have rasp. And the idea is that they're proposing that they transfer. This is what they're basically proposing. So Mr. Barry and Mrs. Barry are going to be equal partners and they're going to continue owning so this is the tax rate. I want to I want to keep these columns the same. This is the tax rate. They're going to continue owning the partnership as equal partners, but they want to give ownership of 20% to their children. So we have straw and rasp. So they're each going to own 20%. So 20% and 20%. So 20% and 20%. And Mr. and Mrs. So when you add the, these two 20%, we're going to get 40%. What does that leave, right? There's 100% in a partnership minus 40%. That means that Mr. and Mrs. are going to total 60%. If we divide that by two, we're going to get 30%. So that means that Mr. and Mrs. each own 30% and 30%. So if we take this $200,000 of income that we're told, the $200,000 of ordinary income, and we multiply that, so 200000 times each of their ownership percentages. So 200,000 times each of their ownership percentages. We're going to get 60,000 allocated to Mr. Barry, 60,000 allocated to Mrs. Barry. We're going to get 40,000 allocated to Straw and 40,000 allocated to Rasp. And the idea is Mr. Barry is subject to a 35% rate. Mrs. Barry is subject to a 35% rate. Strawberry is, or I'm sorry, well, yeah, it's the last name, right? Strawberry, that's why I did that. Straw is subject to a 12% rate. So you're already seeing there's going to be tax savings because we go from 35% for the entire $200,000 to now portion of it is taxed at a lower rate. And then RASP is subject to a 22% rate. 
So if we calculate these amounts, 60,000 times 35%, we get $21,000. So 21,000 is the amount that both Mr. and Mrs. Barry, well, they pay together on their married filing joint return, but separately when you're considering their K-1s and they're going to have two K-1s on their married filing joint 1040, they basically together pay $42,000 on their $120,000 subject to a 35% rate, but I just separated that out to show you. And then we go down to straw. So straws, $40,000 subject to a 12% rate, that's going to be $4,800. $4,800. Next, we go to RASP. So RASP, 40,000 times 22%, that's going to be $8,800. $8,800. So now we can total the amounts together. Under the proposed structure, the total taxes that are going to be paid are $55,600. So look at that. Big difference. $70,000 under the old structure where it's half-half. $55,600. And the question is asking is calculate the expected annual tax savings to the family from the proposed transfer of partnership interests. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the $70,000 of taxes paid under the current system minus the $55,600 under the proposed system, which obviously is savings. And we're going to get $14,400 in tax savings under the proposed under the proposed plan. Now, that's what we get, $14,400 under the proposed plan. So that's a big that's a big change. Of course, tax isn't the only thing that drives this, right? You're giving your children ownership in this business, and now they have ownership so they can make decisions and do things. Of course, Mr. and Mrs. Barry together still collectively own more than half, so they control the, the partnership, but they're giving small portions to their children. And the idea is that over time, they're hopefully, they're getting more mature and they can make better decisions. But of course, they want to start transferring wealth and things like that. You also have to wonder, I mean, in, in these amounts, we don't know the value of the partnership, but the effect of the gift taxes. Now we're just dealing with income tax. I'm showing you income tax issues, but gift tax can play a factor if you're gifting these interests to your children, um, because it looks like a complete transfer of a gift. You have to think about those as well. Again, you also have to think about things beyond tax and um, even beyond business, just like the family dynamics, psychological um, issues with the family planning and whatnot. Um, you know, you might want to give straw more interest than rasp, but you know, you understand that because you understand that straw is, is a better business person than rasp, but you also understand if you give more uh, interest to straw and less to rasp, that's going to create, you know, a, a big conflict between the two children and you don't want that as well. So there's all different types of issues to consider. We're just considering it from a tax standpoint to answer the question, calculate the expected annual tax savings to the family from the proposed transfer of partnership interest. $14,400 is the correct answer. Also, as the children, the daughter and the son, straw and rasp get older, they're probably going to be in a higher marginal rate as they're making more money. So yeah, you're going to save money now. So yeah, I mean, of course, yes, this is good. From a tax standpoint, we're saving money, but ultimately taxes aren't really what what, what wag the, the tail on the dog. Again, it comes more down to, to business and family planning because the idea is that they're trying to transfer this to their children before, you know, when they're getting older so they can um, have this business and Mr. and Mrs. Barry don't have to deal with this anymore when they want to go in retirement, right? And go travel the world. That's kind of the idea. So yeah, this is good from a tax standpoint, but it might not be forever these benefits because straw and RAS might also rise to the 35% or even a higher tax rate bracket. So it might just be we might be doing this just from a family standpoint of, oh, our plan is to transfer our, our business to our children anyways. So just keep that in mind as well.